beautiful little place. And again, it's so early in the morning, like I said earlier, but it's nice with the sunrise and you can just get the red color coming in my face. And I've been having a look round and you know what? I think I found it. Here we go. We'll start off with his wife, Diana Norman, 25th of August, 1933, to the 26th of the 1st, 2011. Novelist, journalist, historian, beloved wife, mother, and grandmother. See you in the morning. And Barry Norman, 21st of August, 1933, to the 30th of June, 2017. Film critic, novelist, cricket, aficionado, aficionado beloved husband, father, and grandfather. Barry Norman. Barry Norman there, and his wife, of course, Diana. Now, I've got to say, massive, massive thank you to Barry Norman, because um, her life has ended. No one knows, no one knows for sure. Anyway, I think I found it. Jill's mum, Jean Dando, 1928 to 1986. You are truly wonderful, now so sadly missed. Rest in peace, sweetheart. And then of course, Jill Dando, 1961 to 1999. Your beautiful smile, that unaffected elegance, a genuine star, we love you. So there we have the final resting place of Jill Dando. Um, such a shame really, because like I said earlier on, she had such a promising career, was doing really well, found love, was due to get married. And then through whatever reason, you know, bless her, she, she's murdered. It's horrible. So bless you, Jill. And um, Thank you for what you stood up for because, you know, presenting things like Crime Watch, where she's going on television with Nick Ross and putting herself out there. Um, now, Benny did have his television show between 1955 and 1989. And, wow, look what we have here. Someone's left milk bottles, milk cartons. And in case you didn't know, he sung Ernie, the fastest milk float in the West, I think it was. If memory serves me well. Here we go. Cherish memories of dear husband and father, Alfred Hawthorne Hill, who fell asleep on the 6th of May, 1972, aged 78 years, and of his loved, beloved wife, Helen Florence, who fell asleep the 10th of February 1976, age 81 years. So that's Benny's mum and dad. And then down here, Benny Hill, also of Southampton's Benny Hill, born Alfred Hawthorne Hill, 1924 till 1992. Comedian, son, brother, friend, our boy eternal. God bless. Amazing. It's a massive thank you to Benny Hill because he made us all laugh for years and years. Yeah, as a kid growing up, um, Benny Hill was always on television and uh, it just had that little glint in his eye, you know, mischief, naughtiness, but very intelligent as well. And, you know, he passed away in London in 1992 and um, he was a very humble man. He lived in his flat and he, he apparently had millions in the bank, which was left to his nieces and nephews because he had no children. He wasn't married. Um, here we go. Oh, bless him. 
That picture just makes me want to laugh because of the joy he brought me on telly. In love and memory of Buster Merrifield, 1920 to 1999, he lived for those he loved and those he loved remember him. How cute. And his wife, oh wow, look, there's him with his wife. And his beloved wife, Iris Merrifield, 1910 to 2002, always loving, always caring, always there together forever. And then down here, good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be tomorrow. Um, here we are. Yeah. Always remembered, Diana Dawes Lake, 1931 to 1984, forever loved, only a whisper away. And people have left. A little picture of her there. And of course her late husband, Alan Lake. Love's last gift, remembrance, Alan Lake, 1940 to 1984, together forever, for only a whisper away. Now, Diana had um, previously survived two cancer scares in her life, but in 1984 she went in for some gastric operation, and obviously it didn't didn't go too well. Um, and her late husband Alan, who was her third husband, um, and I think ten years her junior nine years her junior but they had a great relationship they had a son together um, and he sadly passed away in 2019 the son who was only just literally turned 50 I believe um, but Alan once Diana had passed away sadly took his own life um, ever wondered where the expression sweet FA sweet Fanny Adams or sweet come from stay tuned right okay I think I think this is, yeah, Fanny Adams Grove here. Oh, bless, someone's left some flowers, look. And then a little, little toy on top. Okay, let's have a look, let's have a read. To the memory of Fanny Adams, aged eight years and four months, who was cruelly murdered on Saturday, August the 24th, 1867. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, v 28. The stone was erected by the voluntary subscription. Okay, so there's Fanny Adams' headstone there. And we hear, you know, when we hear about it on the news these days, everyone cringes. A child gets abducted. The, you know, the first thing that goes through your mind is, oh, please be returned safely. These days, we had the benefit of the news, the television, the radio, social media, and getting word out really quick. We have the benefit of CCTV, cameras everywhere, people with cameras, phones, dash cameras. The chances are these days, someone will see something. That poor girl never stood a chance. Bernard Law, first Viscount, Montgomery of Alamon. KG, GCB, DSO, Field Marshal. 17th of November 1887 to the 24th of March 1976. David Bernard, 2nd Viscount Montgomery of Alamon, CMG, CBE, 18th August 1928 to 8th of January 2020. Much love by his devoted family. And there we have it. Field Marshal Montgomery. It's weird because it's just like a little little lane for the churchyard, look, right at the back. But a very tranquil, peaceful spot, but, you know, a lot of people walk past here, but it's good that it's 
been kept in pristine condition. Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery. Thank you for everything you did. Massive thank you. And we should all be grateful in this day and age. People of my generation and the ones below us for people like him and maybe some of you, I don't know, but my granddad fought in World War II, as I'm sure some of yours did or your parents did. Now I'm getting a bit close to the camera because it's windy and I want to make sure you can hear me. I think I found it. Let's go and have a look. So the wall's obviously falling down there. Probably Frankie getting up to mischief. In loving memory of my brother Francis, Alec Howard, OBE, known as Frankie Howard. Died the 19th of April, 1992, aged 75 years. What we keep in memory is ours unchanged forever. So there we have the final resting place of Frankie Howard. Um, but many, many laughs to many, many people over the years. So thank you, Frankie, um, for all the comedy that you brought to people. I'm sure there'll be lots of fans out there uh, watching this who will be um, grateful of the, the laughs you brought them over the years. And you know, to to star in Carry On films as well. I think, uh, look at that, we've got a lovely bit of sunshine coming down on the rain. Okay, so I've been walking around this little churchyard long enough now. And you know what? I think I found it. Ow. This ground is so uneven, that I'm sure I'm gonna go for a, <laughs> a head over, you know what, in a minute. God, my feet are wet, man. I think this is it. Yeah, look, Harry H. Corbett, OBE, actor, 1925 to 1982. Maureen Corbett, actress, 1943 to 1999. This bit is really hard to read. It's really gone away. But I did read it to you earlier on. It's a, it's a tough one to read. It's just so dirty. It needs a good clean. So there we have it. Harry H. Corbett's grave. I used to love Steptoe and Son. I thought it was a brilliant show. It's really, really funny. And he was really funny as well. The, the chemistry between them. I know they pr probably didn't have the best relationship off screen, but just hearing him go, you dirty old man. <laughs> uh, just hilarious. If you've never watched Steptoe and Son, if you're one of the overseas viewers um, and you've never seen it, it's good old sort of 70s, 80s comedy at its best. It really is 70s comedy at its best. Definitely worth going to watch. And uh, yeah, Harry H. Corbett. Brilliant. And also in Carry On Screaming as well. What a great film that is, 1966. Love that film. If you like the Carry On films and you like your horror, like me, then hopefully you'll like Carry On Screaming. Brilliant film. Anyway. Thank you, Harry. You've brought me many, many, many years of laughter. I still watch Steptoe and Son now when it's on TV. I really do. And... Um, You know what I'm going to say, don't you? I think I found it. Here we are. Let's come back a little bit. In everlasting memory of Jane... I think I'm saying this correct. Carissa? Carissa? Is that correct? Lorraine Goody. I apologise if I've got that wrong. 
5th of June 1981, 22nd of March 2009, a devoted mother, wife, daughter, granddaughter and friend, loved by so many, your love, warmth and laughter will live on in our hearts forever. And people still leave in little cards and gifts and things, look, which is really nice to see. Over that beautiful view, look. So there we have it, Jade Goody, taken way too young, 27, no age at all, no age at all. Um, and you know, some of you might go, ah, oh, TV reality stars, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter, still a person, still a mother, still a daughter, still a wife, still someone, remember that, okay? But in the early stages, I used to actually, I liked Big Brother in like 2000, 2001, 2000, probably up to about 2004 or something like that. But I used to watch it religiously. Every night I'd be glued to Big Brother. And Jade made me laugh. She did. She was just one of them characters that was full of life. Um, very naive as well, you know, and that's not, a, that's not a down thing. It's a good thing sometimes because someone that's naive can just go about their life and just get through it as best they can. Um, so, thank you, Jade. And I'm sure there's plenty of other people as well, young women especially, who have probably got Jade to thank because it might have enticed them to go for smear tests and, and so forth. Um, and you know, it might have saved their lives. And I think she helped, quote me if I'm wrong, but I think there was a law change in the, the reduction of age that ladies could go and get that done. I don't want to go into it too much. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I believe that through what Jade went through, a lot of ladies' lives was, were saved. I think I found it. Ingrid Pitt Rudlin, actress and author, 21st November 1937 to 23rd of November 2010. Now the ground looks like it's recently been raised and I see this cross in front of it. Anthony Barry Rudlin, 17th of 1st 1932 to 10th of 10th 2019. RAF pilot, writer, producer, and manager of Lotus F1. Wow. So, um, obviously he's been there for three years now. And I'm surprised that the ground's still, still quite raised. So I've just been having a good old walk around and a look about to see if I can see it. And guess what? I think I found it. Now, of course, this is inevitable, isn't it? The minute you start filming a bit more, the man comes and cuts the grass. But here we go. There's a lot of um, bushes <laughs> growing out, but let's see if we can get in there, shall we? It's a beautiful headstone, look at that. Beautiful. Kenneth MacDonald. 20th of November, 1950, to the 6th of August, 2001, age 50. Now, see if I can get and read that part. Loved as a father, husband, son, brother, remembered as a great actor and friend. So there we have it, everyone. Kenneth MacDonald's headstone there, grave. Obviously, the uh, bushes are starting to get a little bit big there. Maybe his family like it like that. That's fine. That's their choice. That's always be respectful of what the families want but what a great guy taken way too soon at the age of 50 years old in 2001 um, you know to be in it ain't half hot mum I mean that's a legendary comic 
showing itself. You know, it wins the Davis. Um, it's just got so many great actors in it. And then to then go on and get the role in Only Fools and Horses. Thanks, Ken. It's a, a lovely memorial stone there. Um, this place has got so much history to it and it just looks amazing. Beautiful place. I think I found it. In loving memory of Melanie Appleby, who passed away on the 18th of January 1990, aged 23, always so thoughtful, loving and kind, out of sight, but never out of mind. Oh. Final resting place there of Melanie Appleby. So sorry that you got taken way too early, Melanie, but you, your music lives on. You know, everyone loves a bit of Mel and Kim, don't they, when you hear it. When you hear an 80s classic, and Respectable comes on the dance floor, you know, everyone's up and about, so your music is still going strong. People still dance to it in places. Bless you. So this is always a good part when you're walking around and look at look at it from that scenery look it's a beautiful little place and do you know what i think i found it let's go and have a look oh, come along here there we are treasured memories of a beloved husband, dad and granddad, Mike Reed, died 29th July 2007, aged 67 years. A light is from our household gone, a voice we love is stilled. A place is vacant in our hearts, which never can be refilled. Beautiful. And people like his wife, obviously that. My husband, goodbyes are not forever, goodbyes are not the end. They simply mean I'll miss you until we meet again. And then something from the children there. Really nice touch. Got the sun in my eyes behind. Now I just want to say, Mike Reed. Um, now I don't watch the soaps at all these days, but in the sort of 80s and early 90s when, you know, before yeah, always interrupted. Uh, before we had the uh, option of so many TV channels, I used to watch EastEnders back then. And Mike Reed was a brilliant character, Frank Butcher. When he came into it, he changed the whole dynamics of the show. You know, he bought the Queen Vic pub from um, Ross Kemp, Grant Mitchell, and his character was with uh, Peggy, then Pat Butcher, who was an old flame of his. If you haven't seen um the soap before then sorry you won't understand what i'm going on about but to all the Br british viewers that have seen it before uh, during the 70s and 80s you know wall up and as a kid <laughs> that's what he used to do and, he, and he'd tell the audience to shut up shut up shut up shut up and um and when you know run around was on i used to love that as a kid you get all the different you'd have a question you have three answers and the kids would go to an answer one two or three but then they'd play a bit of music and they had the chance to change their minds. And you go, run right around! And they sort of go around. But Mike Reed, brilliant. I loved him. Great actor. Great. And he was in Snatch, of course. Michael. Mike, thank you very much. You, you brought me um, a lot of smiles over my time, as I hope he did for some of you viewers out there. I've got to say, he's been well behaved, but actually, I've got to say, he's been a bad luck. <laughs> That's what we like to see, isn't it? Yeah. What are you doing? I think it sort of remains for me to say what a great show it's been having Rob Hall and Emu here and thank goodness he accepted thank the fiver that I gave him early not to attack and, and join us again if you can That's bye for now stop it Pick have it a good week I think I finally found it what a tough one that was Dad, 
in ever loving memory of Rodney Stephen Hull, 1935 to 1999, sorry. I loves you. That's why I say cheerio, not goodbye. Wow. So, I've got to say, thank you, Rod Hull. You gave me many, many years as a kid of happiness. And even as an adult as well, last night I watched some of his clips on YouTube and I was rolling around laughing. It was just crazy, it's just craziness. Anyway, I think I found it. Here we go. Roy Kinnear, actor, 1934 to 1988. Tragically killed filming in Spain. Oh my love, we had such loving Carmel, Karina, Kirsty, and Rory. And then down here, to know him was to love him. So there we have it, the grave of Roy Kinnear. An amazing actor. I don't know if you can see, he's got the, um, I don't know what those symbols are called. Do you know we got like the, the face where one's upside down and one's smiling? It's like a drama sort of face, but I can't, I can't think of the actual, the name of it. But thank you, Roy. Always made me laugh in his films. You know, like one of our dinosaurs is missing. Uh, Herbie returns to Monte Carlo. Um, good actor, good actor comedy actor but really good serious and of course he's in the Hammer horror films as well which are brilliant love the Hammer horror films imagine that getting to play opposite Christopher Lee and also being directed by Charlton Heston and other things Terry as well Wogan. Sir anyway. Terry Wogan he was a sir he was a knight let's call him Sir Terry Wogan you always felt safe with Sir Terry Wogan on the telly or on the radio if something was going to go wrong he was cool as a bear he could just handle it and it would be fine there'd be no issues at all and you just knew that once Terry was in charge, the whole thing was going to be good. Anyway, I think I found it. I'm really excited for this one because he went too soon and he was a legend. And I wish I wasn't really coming here because I wish he was still with us, which is a shame. I know that this was the bench that was uh, put here for him. And this is where he was buried. And this is the way they do things around here. They don't have headstones as such. So Michael Terence Wogan, 1938-2016. Te, dad, granddad, pa. You take the sunshine with you. So there we have it. So Terry Wogan buried here. What an absolute legend. He's so sadly missed um, in the entertainment industry and just in life really. You know, children in need isn't hasn't been the same since since uh since he's gone. But um, I think I found it. Now this one was a very, very hard one to find. Look at this, look at this place here. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. But let's have a look down here. Rest in peace. Greatly loved and sadly missed. Thomas Frederick Cooper, 19th of March, 1921, to the 15th of April, 1984. And this is his son who passed, passed away, who was an actor as well. 
his son Thomas John Cooper, 19th 1st, 1956, to 13th of 8, 13th of the 8th, 1988. To unique mother Gwendolyn Victoria Cooper, 1920 to 2002. So they were cremated and their ashes interred here. But, um, wow, you know. Now it never ceases to amaze me. Um, you know, I've done a lot of these now and you guys have come with me all the time. And Tommy Cooper, legend, international comedian, so well known all over the world, especially because of the Red Fez. And he's interred here, you know, his ashes are interred here. But it's just a shame that there's nothing more for him really. You know, the career, the life that he had, the amount of laughs that he gave people. And, you know, the way he's remembered is his ashes interred and there's just a little, you know, little plaque there. Which he's probably laughing at. <laughs> you know what he's like? He'd have that look, he'd come on stage, he'd look and he'd just get the audience roaring with laughter. Now I want to say a massive thank you to Tommy Cooper because I know how many laughs he gave people and how much fun he gave people over the years and he will never be replaced. You'll never find a magician or a comedian that could walk on stage, look at an audience with those big blue eyes and his black hair sticking out the size of his fez and just make people laugh just by looking at them. And bless you, Tommy, you were an amazing, amazing man. Yeah. Come along now. There's a lady that comes to this grave twice a week from London. Oh, it's windy. And she comes and puts flowers on it every, every week, twice a week. Robin Hugh Gibb, singer-songwriter, 1949 to 2012. People are still leaving little plaques, little messages, flowers. grave there. Now, I'll tell you a little story. Um, get his umbrella right. Back in 2008, um, I went to some acting classes and I did like an audition and there was a show that was being put on. I didn't know about it at the time, but a guy was there who was casting, was watching people for a show. And it was a musical called um, Boogie Child. And it was basically about a bloke who lived in the 70s and he couldn't let those times go. And the writer and the director was um, just telling us a bit about it. And he had three main characters, three guys. Uh, Barry, funnily enough, uh, Morris, and the other guy was called Robbie, which is a nod to Robin. And I played Robbie in that show. And um, it was great. It was all Bee Gees songs, and we got to sing the songs. Um, I'll try and put a clip in here if I can. I'm not sure how clear the copy will be, but I'll put it in so that you can see me on stage singing some Bee Gees songs.
Caroline Louise Flack, born on 9th of November 1979 until the 15th of February 2020, was an English television and radio presenter and actress. Caroline was born at Chase Farm Hospital in Enfield, London, on the 9th of November 1979. Bless you, Caroline. Thank you for what you brought to the earth, your amazing presentation skills, the laughter, that infectious smile you had, that natural beauty, that spirit, that soul, she just had it all and uh, like just taken too soon really, someone like that's just had a great life and career in front of them and obviously so well loved from your family and friends which we get to see these days. Um, so, thank you. You, now I'm led to believe that Frederick was given a pauper's grave to start off with and that the Titanic Historical Society in America gave him this headstone. But, uh, poor guy, you know, he, um, what he must have gone through that evening which led to that depression for those years and years afterwards. It must have been horrendous. But look, someone's put a little Lego Titanic down there. How cool is that? It's amazing. Frederick Fleet, 1887 to 1965. Look out, RMS Titanic. Erected to his memory by the Titanic Historical Society, INC, Indian Orchard, Massachusetts, I'm assuming that is M-A-S-S, USA. Now I thought, because I couldn't find this headstone, this grave anywhere, as in there's no geographical maps of it, but if you come into Hollybrook Cemetery from the main entrance, and drive along and on the right hand side look out for these two trees okay you see those two trees and then just along you'll see Frederick Fleet's headstone we can only imagine what people went through on that night in in 1912 on the Titanic you know What's this? And I know he's buried next to his wife. Let's have a look here. Oh, here we go. In loving memory, I don't know if you can see that very well, of Sir Alec Guinness, CHCBE, born the 2nd of April 1914, died the 5th of August 2000. The readiness is all. Rest in peace. Just come back out a bit so you can see. Alec Guinness's grave there and as we look next to it we can see his wife Lady Marula I think that's pronounced Guinness she was also born in 1914 and passed October 2000 so she passed away two months after Sir Alec quite a humble headstone in with the uh, rest of the headstones around here. So unassuming as well, you would never realise walking around here how much of a great actor he was. And uh, walking along here, and um, yeah, he just found George's way. sister there, Melanie, who passed away on Christmas Day, 2019, his name Leslie, and of course George.
it's nice to see some people have left some flowers and kept it in good condition. Those two ladies there, lovely. Just had a good old chat with them. They were big George Michael fans. They didn't know where he was buried, so I said I'd uh, show him. But like I say, his sister passed on the 25th of December 2019. But his mum, she was born on the 24th of December, so just before Christmas. And she passed on the 26th of February. So there you have it, George. I wanna just give the headstone a little tap. Thank you for all the music and uh, all the happiness you've brought to people's lives. Here we are. In loving memory of Cynthia Levy. 21st of October 1927. That was Amy's grandmother to the 5th of May 2006. And her beloved grandchild, Amy Jade, by the house, 14th September 1983 to the 23rd of July 2011. Forever in the hearts of their devoted family, Mitch and Jane, Janice and Richard, Melody, Elliot, Alex, and Reva. And I believe these people here are some of the people that. Amy worked with. Thank you for the music, Amy. God. And do you know what? I think I found it. John Chalice, actor, 1942 to 2021. I am here. Oh, brilliant. That's brilliant. For those of you that don't know, in a clip on Only Fools and Horses, they're doing a seance and they're asking, the medium asked for someone by the name of Aubrey. And John's character, Boise, comes back with, I am here. So that is brilliant. That is such a lovely testament. So there we have the final resting place of John Chalice. What a great guy. What a really, really funny man. Um, plays some amazing characters, but obviously the majority of us will probably know him as Boise. So thank you, John. Bless you. Thank you so much for your comedy over the years. Great, great actor. And um, from what I'm led to believe, I've never met the man, but a really, really nice man as well. So many people have um, said that he was a nice guy. When I've said that I've come to, on coming to, to film at his location, um, some people who have met him before have said what a nice guy he was and what a lovely man. He had so much time for all the fans, um, which is great to hear. I love hearing that about people. So if you've met him at all, and you have a story, please leave it down below because I love reading all these things. They're amazing. It's really good to hear. Anyway, thank you for that. From beautiful Herefordshire on this uh, cold Sunday morning, but lovely. Um, please leave your comments down below. Give us a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy. I am here. <laughs>